Here I'm just going to mention a lot of other things we couldn't go over uh, today. So there are many things. Uh, um, so the the build system. So you might you might think why would we care? Um, so Cocos and probably uh, similarly uh, Raja. So SQL is they're using their own compiler, so they don't really have the same problem. But uh, we we support you know all these different architectures. So. We're giving you more than the parallel construct in code. We're really helping you with portability of your code, uh, just configure and run correctly on this machine. So it's, it's an important aspect. And it's not very interesting, but it's a really, really important part of what Cocos gives you. Um, about uh, reduction, uh, we, we, co we can do other reduction. You know, we can do product. We, you can even define your own custom uh, reduction. For instance, you could be. Uh, if you work, you do ge computational geometry. You could be computing, you know, the box, the the a box that contain all your points. You can define your own. You have your own abstraction for points. You could do that, and with Cocos, define your own reducers. Um, I mentioned it, but uh, couldn't get into it. So multidimensional loops with via the MD range uh, policy, which now is supported as an outer policy, but coming up soon uh, inner policy as well. Uh, more advanced data structures. So the Cocos view is really the main one, but uh, there, are, there are other ones, uh, uh, some better than others. Um, the subviews, uh, the ability to slice uh, ori an original view and select maybe, um, like when you had your matrix, select one row or select one column or even a, s a range within, uh, within it. Um, this is, uh, by the way, uh, I mentioned uh, MD span that's going to C23. Um, so, MD span, uh, we voted in C23, the abstraction for MD range. But uh, we, unfortunately, uh, we, we are running out of time. And in C23, you're going to have uh, the abstraction for the array, but the sub MD span, which is the equivalent of sub, sub view, uh, is actually going to be C26. Which doesn't mean that your vendor won't ship it with it. I mean, and Cocos certainly is going to provide an implementation you could use with your um, standard compliant implementation. But it, it, unfortunately, uh, yeah, the pushing stuff to the standard takes a lot of time, and this one is not going to make it. Um, so atomic uh, operation and. Uh, uh, so we have support for atomic operation. Uh, an interesting thing, I don't know if my colleague was going to uh, cover it or not, but we actually, um, I mean, we work closely with, uh, with Raja, right? And we, uh, we actually share now uh, a library that we call Diesel um, that has primitive from, for atomics, which is main, now the main solution in Cocos. So essentially, we worked um, um, to share some of the load. Uh, and so we have the, the common abstraction for uh, atomic operation, it's, and it's beyond the basic thing you can see in Cocos. You have, you have the notion of uh, memory order and memory scope for your atomic, so it's very powerful. Uh, and Cocos has uh, another uh, um, pattern, which is actually probably one of the only, uh, it's casted under the, uh, the advanced data structure. We have something we call scatter view that can help you if you have a pattern, gather scatter. Uh, you're yeah, you have some uh, strategy, like you're doing an histogram, maybe you want to fill an histogram. And uh, you could implement different strategies that work better depending on if you're on a host, on, GP on a GPU. You know, on the GPU, you're going to have uh, some time, you're going to have um, hardware level atomics that are very performant. Whereas on the, uh, on the CPU, you would be better, uh, better off having a duplicating strategy. Uh, you duplicate it, you duplicate your data, and when you need to access it at the end, you uh, collapse it. Um, anyway, we have abstraction for that. That's a scatter view in Cocos. It's very powerful. Uh, we have uh, something uh, we call team scratch memory. Um, that's how you access uh, to what Kudak calls shared memory. Um, so it's way uh, beyond the scope of this uh, short introduction, but we support. Uh, um, shared memory. 
uh, we have uh, CMD uh, vectorization support. Uh, it used to be uh, an external uh, library for Cocos, but we actually merged that uh, recently, and it's going to be part of 3.7, so you won't have to fetch another library to use it. Um, we have ongoing work. That's the thing I mentioned briefly uh, when I was giving you the Cocos ecosystem, ongoing work with uh, uh, interoperability with MPI and PGAS integration. Uh, all the tools for profiling, debugging, and tuning. Uh, yes, and math kernels and graph kernels, uh, that, that is. Um, one, uh, yeah, one thing that we um, couldn't possibly cover here uh, that I see not in the list, but I had a quest really good question uh, during the break was uh, with respect to uh, asynchronicity and synchron uh, synchronicity. Uh, we we have the notion of, uh, so the execution space I mentioned, uh, we have execution space instances. With, uh, so if you're familiar with CUDA terminology, uh, we can wrap a stream, or with SQL, we can wrap a queue. Uh, and uh, the, so the parallel four in Cocos are always asynchronous. Parallel reduce, there is a special syntax to say that you want it to be asynchronous. Um, and um, so it's, it's beyond the scope of what I can do here, but uh, there is also support for that. It's for, uh, yeah, for coarse grain, uh, um, coarse grain uh, uh, parallelism. So the Cocos lectures I mentioned uh, before, so it's at the beginning when pandemic uh, hits, we were supposed to have uh, multiple, uh, so we, we used to do every Every, like three times a year, four times a year, a week long training at different leadership computing facilities. And uh, yeah, that's how long it would take, like a full week. In, even, even so, you were just fresh, ready to. <laughs> I mean, we were just making sure that at the end, you, your code would compile with Cocos, you knew how to build it, and you had understood the primitive, and you, you were able to get going. And we were also trying to organize once a year a more advanced version where you already had all your code in Cocos, but now you wanted more performance and we would send you a few experts. But anyway, so when pandemic hit, uh, we couldn't do all this training and so we decided uh, uh, we would work on a recorded online series. And uh, so it was two years ago, so it's still pretty fresh. Um, if you watch it, you're going to see most of the slide. Uh, you have the short version of module one, module two, um, and uh, module four. So I encourage you to uh, go watch them. They're, they're pretty good. And um, you, so I'm going to try to go uh, quickly over the, uh, the exercise, but it's too, uh, too short of a time to do anything. The, what I'm going to say is that Besides the fact that there is a solution of the exercise, if you want to look at them, um, in the lecture, um, my colleague Christian actually do, does live the exercise um, at the end and explain uh, more than I could ever do uh, today. Um, so how to find more? Uh, so again, find the, the main uh, source of truth for all Cocos developers, all users is the GitHub repository. So there is nothing hidden. You're going to see what, what we do, the reviews, everything is open. Um, finding, if you want to find this recording, you, you can use this short link, but don't worry. It's, you can find it very easily, uh, either just via, via Google or on our GitHub organization. Um, ha, the, yeah, I forgot to update this slide. So the Cocos Wiki, uh, it still exists. Uh, but we actually recently, uh, we are migrating to a more modern version. Uh, we using, uh, we used to document everything in the wiki and now we moved it into Sphinx documentation and host it somewhere else. But if you go to that link, it's gonna transfer it. Um, and uh, how to join, so it's cocosteamslack.com. Uh, uh, same thing, you will find it from GitHub very easily. Um, Try to use your address that you would like to use. Most likely, you already have colleagues uh, from uh, your university or your company that joined, and me or Christian already whitelisted your list, and you can just enroll without intervention. If, if you get, uh, um, if you bounce and they tell you you need, you need an invitation, send me an email, or send Christian an email. Um, yeah, easy to find. Uh, Christian's, e Christian's email is in every single headers uh, 
and I think in this presentation I have both emails. If I mean, it's easy to find. Uh, so we have a reservation as sent, but I was already thinking, um, I mean, it's not reasonable to, um, we can't really, we don't really have the, uh, the time to do a interesting example. So I'm, what I'm going to suggest uh, is uh, I'm going to solve uh, the first exercise uh, live with you. You can ask me questions during it. If I have time, I solve the second one. Um, we, we have a recorded version of that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's really manageable to have all of you get established on the machine. And, um, so I was initially thinking uh, that I was going to do it on the same machine as you. And I realized this morning that I, um, even though I'm also at Oak Ridge, I forgot to uh, renew my Ascent um, uh, account, even though I have access to Summit. But if I did go to Summit, I would have to go through the normal queue, not through the reservation. So I'm going to cheat. And uh, I'm accessing some other machine. Um, all you need to know is, uh, the, so we have on this, um, uh, it's an um, ARM-based machine. It, it doesn't really matter. We, I'm going to use uh, OpenMP, and I'm going to use, uh, if we get to it, uh, it has Ampere uh, GPUs, so NVIDIA, the latest current generation. Um, so the way you would, uh, so you go to, uh, so you, you would clone Cocos. Uh, Cocos organization, Cocos uh, starts well. Yeah, I need to call it something else because uh, uh, because I already have it. So you would, yeah, you find a really good name. And uh, just showing you how it built. I'll, I'll use the one I pre-built because uh, I need a different version, but I'm just showing you quickly. So the way, the mo so we support way too many things to, uh, to, build, co to build Cocos, but the one, we have a simple language. Unless you have a really good reason not to, please use CMake. Uh, and uh, so what I'm going to do uh, here is uh, I'm going to, uh, so usually you would tell Cocos um, where to install. Uh, and uh, so you need to get familiar a bit with CMake. Uh, it's very easy to find information online. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to do it here in an install directory. Um, I want, uh, so you don't necessarily need to say it. Um, if you don't say the build type, we're going to assume you mean, uh, we're going to do release with debug uh, symbols uh, because it's likely you might need to debug and you'll be happy that we did that. But here I'm pretty bold and I don't want debug symbols. Um, and so I'm going to then enable, say I want to uh, uh, enable CUDA. It's that simple, CUDA on. Uh, and so I know what architecture there is, but I'm just actually curious what's going to happen. So I'm not going to tell the architecture and Cocos is probably going to crash and say, uh, I don't know how to do it. So if I wanted, uh, um, so in all the tests, I encourage you to enable CUDA Lambda. This you want. It's going to become the default, but it's, it's a long story. But because uh, we didn't have uh, NVIDIA refused uh, for a long time to officially support Lambdas, we were not going to say we didn't want to promise to you we make Lambda work magically. So we were making you spell out that you want to use Lambda and understand that there are limitations coming from the CUDA compiler. So, so for all the things I showed you, we are using CUDA Lambda, so I'm asking for it here. And I'm going to ask for OpenMP, just showing you that I could ask for uh, enable OpenMP. OK. Uh, and uh, I'm going to, so do not, uh, typically you will create a directory, go to the directory and point to the source. I'm using, I know CMake quite a bit, so I'm just telling to create a build directory. Um, so it's going to configure not in the source, but in build. So I omitted the uh, architecture on purpose because uh, um, that's probably stuff you're going to do. 
so it's uh, so here, oh yeah. You probably want to load load the CUDA, otherwise it's not going to work very very well. Okay, second attempt. It's going to find my compiler. I expect that the login node doesn't have GPU, so it should crash. But yep. So this is probably the kind of stuff you're going to see uh, very often. So I know it's a bit of overwhelming new option. How does it work? So I'm doing it on purpose so that you see there are, for me, it's logical because I work with them every day, but there are ways of finding out what architecture are, uh, are avail available. So first off, if you're doing it on your own machine and um, we can detect, we try to detect the GPU, we will do it. Here I'm doing it on the login node and it doesn't have anything. So assume I don't know what's the name for the architecture. I'm going to do CC make uh, and I'm going, I'm telling him that the binary directory is in build because I did a dash B build. And I'm just browsing what are the available architecture. And uh, I know that I, that's the one I want, uh, the MPI 100, so it's 80, the architecture. And uh, here I'm enabling by hand and I uh, say configure again. And uh, should have worked. So now I'm saying CMake build and I'm thinking where the build directory is. Oh, I forgot to dash. And I suppose that means it didn't work. Uh, so because I actually myself don't really like CC make, I'm gonna this time spell it out. So it was, that's what it was spelled. But CCMake is a really, I use it when I don't remember how to spell something. And I don't want to go uh, into Cocos source code or Cocos documentation. I mean, it's documented, but if I'm, I don't want to look the documentation, I use CCMake. This time it configured. And so I'm building. I'm going to do, because I'm boldly assume no one is on the machine. I'm not building the test, so it should be acceptable. And the last thing that you see uh, being built mentioned diesel. So because you don't point to an external uh, diesel, that's a thing we share with Raja. We, we have a bundle version into Cocos. OK, it's finished. And uh, uh, yeah, so build. And then uh, same thing. There are other ways to do it. You could go to you could go to build and do make install, but I know the shortcuts. So. And that's it. You have a working uh, a working CUDA uh, install optimized for Ampere that I could be using. But uh, so now I'm uh, gonna show you. Uh, so I cloned yesterday Crocos. Uh, Cocos tutorials, like believe me, it's uh, the, it's fresh. So I could do git clone again, but I'm not going to bother. And so there is an exercises uh, directory, and I'm just going to go to the first one. So try not to cheat, but the result is in solution. And so here uh, I need to um, to configure against so. Christian, my colleague, uh, is a big fan of make files and he knows how to use them very well. Uh, and this is one of the last things where we still technically support it. These make files are not optimized for this machine and I don't like make files, so I'm going to use uh, CMake. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to hopefully hit what I did yesterday. Oh, this. Uh, uh, this is today. Okay, so here I'm telling, so showing you what I'm doing. Uh, the CMake prefix path, uh, I didn't want to, uh, because that's what you're gonna see and I don't want to cheat. Uh, we require an old version of CMake. These are boring things, but kind of matter. Um, so how do you tell Coke, uh, CMake where to find Cocos? 
because uh, in this tutorial uh, CMake list we're using an ancient uh, CMake version, I have to use CMake prefix path. Most of the time you will use Cocos root. Uh, and uh, I'm using Cocos develop from yesterday night because that's what I'm used to. Uh, you don't have, you can use the latest release, but we finally, uh, three days ago, decided we require C17, so I just rediscovered that. Uh, and so I have to explicitly ask for um, C17, otherwise it wouldn't compile against the version I installed yesterday. And uh, similar, I'm telling you to create a build directory. And uh, here this is, it just warns me that um, it used, uh, it disabled CMake extension, which is a good thing to do in general, but I'm lazy and I didn't want to type this. Okay, so now it's, uh, let's see uh, if it builds. Obviously, it won't do the right thing, but it should, it should build. Okay, it builds. So at least uh, this is a good start. So now let's look at the exercise. Uh, so I'm going to the top. So in the exercise one, the goal is to uh, parallelize the auto loop of the problem we've seen a million times today, the pro scalar product between Y and AX using a parallel radius. So this program uh, with all the comments at the moment is, uh, it was doing it in serial. Okay, actually uh, let me execute it before I change anything. Uh, okay, it's gonna be very slow. So, so that we have this for comparison later. And so now, so I want to use Cocos for most cases, for a long time until you become pretty advanced Cocos user, the only header you need to know about is Cocos Core. So you include Cocos Core, and then you go to your main. The main is getting uh, the command line arguments, arc C the counter, and arc V the pointer to the null terminated string that have the options. And so here the exercise start. So Cocos, similarly to MPI, before you call any, virtually any, there's a few exception, uh, any um, runtime function from Cocos, any parallel for any object Cocos view, you must initialize Cocos. And for your program to be correct, before you shut down, you should be calling Cocos finalize. So here, uh, I guess, making my life too easy, I just have to uncomment. Uh, and uh, okay, so Cocos is initialized. I'm, because I'm like this, I'm gonna jump to the end. Uh, I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna jump to finalize because it disturbed me that it's not closed, the, the parenthesis. So now at the end of the body, uh, I'm calling Cocos finalize. So this, do you see this uh, scope? Do you, so, I don't know how advanced you guys are in with C++, but so I told you the semantics in Cocos, you need to have Cocos initialized before you create any object and uh, you need to finalize at the end. But before you call finalize, you need to be done with Cocos, which means that all the Cocos object that you created needs to be out of scope. And so here I'm artificially by putting this uh, uh, curly braces here, Bef, you know, after initialize and before, fi uh, before finalize, I'm making sure that anything that's defined inside it is going getting out of scope and they won't be, I won't get an, yes? Uh, quick question, is it possible to finalize and then reinitialize? Like if we have a section of the code that no. we just code with? No. no, just like with MPI, uh, uh, you cannot. There's been fierce uh, fight uh, over, <laughs> but uh, the, I think now the consensus is, uh, I mean, you, we, ha we listen to our users and use case and everything, but they, I, I mean, if you, I, I can explain to you uh, the kind of consideration we have. I mean, we want to support everybody, but what happened, so often people are gonna compose application, right? What happened if uh, you initialize Cocos, right? Uh, I mean, some people will tell us, and I believe they have this problem. I don't know who called Cocos initialize, 
and well, you have you really have a problem if uh, you, when you write your code, you don't know if you're a library and you're definitely not calling it, or if you're the final guy writing the application. So, assume that you call you call Cocos finalize, okay? You allocate some some stuff, and someone else call final call finalize. Uh, all the potentially all the objects you have, I mean, it's going to crash before because we actually tell you that you didn't do it. But potentially you have toxic, like your data is lost, uh, you know, some intermediate representation of Cocos were flushed. So, so it's a real problem. Then now assume we try to allow you to, oh, but I reinitialize before I do that. But what does it mean for your internal, you know, some of the stuff, the counter are lost. Like it's, it, it potentially it could be horrible. Like we would have, um, just think, so we didn't cover that, but instances you're doing, doing asynchronous application, uh, computation, uh, you'll give the control back to someone else and he finalized before you, like, just think about the potential, all the things that could go wrong. So our, long, our, our position is pretty simple now, is you must initialize before just once. You cannot, um, there were people who wanted to be able to call finalize before initialize and do nothing, no. We don't support it anymore. You must initialize just once before you, you do anything. And if you initialize, you, not, you must finalize just once. And so it's, if you think about it, um, that, this is the only thing that are really going to work. This is what MPI does, and no one really fights anymore with MPI. The one thing that's a bit awkward, I will tell you, with the, this cop guard thing is because MPI doesn't give you objects. Like, so for instance, if I didn't do that and I had a view, what happened is finalize is called and the view gets out of scope after this, you know, at the here. You see my, you see my, uh, and you get an error. I mean, you're done with your computation, but it doesn't look really pretty to get, uh, you know, an, an abort uh, when you're trying to, to, to wrap up. So we have actually something called a scope guard that you can call, which is just a, a, a handle, uh, an, obje an object, C++ object, where we forward everything to the, uh, on the constructor to uh, initialize, and we make sure that this gets out of scope after all the views. So if I had used scope guard, which I would have if someone didn't already put pre-commented this thing, um, you don't need then the extra scope, okay? So, yeah, so basically you have your hello world here, you initialized Cocos. So what this does, the Cocos initialize, it passes, okay, I'll be done in five minutes. Um, so when, when you give us a command line argument, we have another way to uh, more efficient to uh, programmatically initialize Cocos um, by giving some class that you can, where you can say, I want to set these options uh, to that or whatever. It's more uh, handy than handle an array of, um, of uh, array of characters. But anyway, when you do that, that's a, I hope that's what you're gonna do most of the time. Cocos can parse common line arguments. We recognize things like number of threads, uh, what device to use, uh, things like that. Um, so this is how your hello world starts. And so then, uh, so it's initialized and I can use Cocos construct inside. And what it's telling me here is please parallelize this loop. So I'm not gonna touch it, even though I could. So we have shortcuts when you get more advanced in, um, in Cocos. We have short, if you just want to set one view to a, a value, you can do a deep copy uh, and you put the value you want to uh, set your, value, your view to. But anyway, here they want me to do a parallel loop explicitly. I'm giving it a label because I need to show you the good example. Um, even, yeah, so then remember, so first argument, the label, so the second argument, the range, and then uh, same thing, good example, to be portable, it needs to be a cocol, cocos lambda. Uh, int i, and that's it. Uh, and yeah, sorry, I need to, so now I need to close the parenthesis and dot product. So because I'm lazy, I'm just gonna copy and paste, replace y by x, n by m, and I delete this and I close. And then the thing that actually matter is this loop, 
and for this one I'm gonna spell it out pal4 so uh, ax is it no it's in it a in it sorry okay so an iteration and I'm passing a cocos lambda comma cocos lambda the counter was J if I'm not mistaken yep what's up what did I misspell oh yeah yep thank you okay so now we initialize the uh, X Y and A and now so we there's a repeat loop but the main loop to parallelize is uh, outer loop of the parallel radius uh, sorry so it's parallel four uh, and I'm gonna call it uh, dot uh, yeah whatever I gave it a name right and uh, so then it's a cocos lambda and that's it and then at the end I close it and I think that's all there is to do now we're gonna see uh, how bad I did yep assignment to read only variable. oh yes of course no one caught that mm -hmm. I totally did not do that on purpose actually so it's a parallel reduce right so you see how it was telling me that I was capturing some things at constant yep reduce so dots and then so what do we need to do so the it's double reference and I can't think of a good name so I'm gonna call it update it's a private uh, variable to update and so this is updates that need to be updated here and then I tell Cocos when you're done I want my result in result and hopefully this time it works for real Uh, what line? 181. 181. Uh, did I delete something? Yes, I replaced by mistake. That should be okay. Yep. And now our exercise. Well, the bandwidth was sub gigabyte um, uh, before. Now it's uh, 13 uh, gigabyte. I was uh, really bad, and I ran on. Uh, I ran in the host uh, on the sorry on the lo on the login node. And uh, I'm gonna submit a job, and I'm gonna explicitly that I want the cocos num threads to be I don't know, I don't even know how many threads they have, uh, and I misspelled this. But anyway, that was it for the first exercise. I am really sorry uh, we don't get to spend more time uh, doing exercise. But as I said, they are recorded online, and um, if while doing them you run into any problem please just reach out to me and i'll i'll happily even uh, share my screen with you and help you through it thank you guys <laughs>